Hi, gang. It's Patrick. And Ryan. Coming up on today's episode, we open the envelope and announce our Fab Five favorite Disney Oscar wins. As always, we discuss the latest Disney news, and we close out the show with some quick D. All that and more on today's episode of Gays Do the D. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Ryan, you better work the red carpet, Tucker. Patrick, the Rusical, the series, the sequel, Kazuki. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling about this season of Drag Race since you brought it up? <laughs> Best season of Drag Race in the past, like, two, year, two three years, I think. Wow. It's so good. I think yeah. the queens are the most dynamic. We have such mm. original queens this season. Whereas, Fair. like, yeah. you know, some seasons I'm like, okay, that's Bob the Drag Queen 2.0, or that's, like, another form of <laughs> yes. Trixie, like, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. they're just, like, so original this season. I'm, I'm all about it. I do have one question for yeah. you when it comes to Drag Race. Controversial but brave. Plain Jane, where do we stand? I, 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 I can't. I like a villain, but there's something... Just, just like bullying about her instead yeah. do you know what i mean it's like it, this isn't even funny they're not even funny reads it's just you're just being mean you know what i mean 100 percent. like i think i felt like candy muse was the villain of her season whenever she mm. was originally on drag race but the thing is that candy muse was funny and i know a lot yeah. of people don't yeah. feel that way because she talks like oscar the grouch almost <laughs> but yes i like Plain Jane just isn't funny. She's just no. a mean person, and I'm just not into it. That part. That part I don't right like there. the burger finger. I don't like the way I that she that's... licks her finger. No, same. I, I it just, mm-mm. She's not, not into she's it. She's not for me. Not into it. I, I can acknowledge that she's a good drag queen, but I don't yes. like her personality at all. <laughs> art, art is subjective, right? Mm-hmm. And I say... It, it, it's it's not in my gallery. I don't like her. <laughs> I'm, I don't like her. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I like that you're just casually flashing your Stanley mug, water mug, Thank in front you. of me. <laughs> I just bought it. I don't know how to act. Like This is great. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm like six months late. I know I'm late. But look That's at her. That's my favorite. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. I like that sage green. It's beautiful. The sage green in a mat. It's so pretty. I don't even want to put any stickers on it. Like Our Tweedles are like, now we need a picture because. <laughs> oh, I'll drop a picture with my Stanley Cup. I, I recognize. And like, I feel like the Stanley Cup is dead now. Like, I am being so extra mm. chuggy. The fact that I'm this late to getting a Stanley Cup. But let me tell you, I have never peed so much in my whole entire life. My kidneys, they're high-fiving. My yeah. kidneys, they're doing the keep it shuffle. My <laughs> kidneys, they're listening to WAP, and they're ecstatic that I'm drinking this much water. I'm obsessed with that. No, I still use my Stanley all the time. It's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Drink water. So Drink nice. water, everybody. Drink water. Yes. Have you heard that the new cup is supposed to be the Aswala or the Awala? Have you heard of those? Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's, that is supposed to be the new cup. And I okay. can't confirm or deny. I saw them at Target, and I was like, mm. yeah. Not so much. Okay, fair enough. Because the thing that I love about a Stanley Cup, and I know that we should talk about Disney, but the thing that I specifically love about Stanley Cup, for those who grew up with Sonic American Drive-In, there was nothing like after school (laughs) rolling up and getting a Route 44 Cherry Limeade after a tough day in middle school. And baby, this is a Route 44 right here with a handle. That's hilarious. (laughs) And I live. Do they have Sonic in Minnesota? They do. Yeah. Okay. Are you a fan? I I like the Sonic. Or I used to. I, I think there's like one left in Minnesota. Um, the experience was better than the food, I feel like, at, at a mm. Sonic. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I will throw down for a breakfast toaster sandwich from Sonic. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> any 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 time of day. I yeah. love I love a cherry limeade. I love a watermelon limeade. I love a peach sweet tea. Whenever I was really young, I used to get a strawberry vanilla root beer because, like, I guess I wasn't concerned for my mm. blood sugar levels at the time. So good. 
Give me a root beer any day, any kind of root beer, cream soda. I'm I'm in. I'm invested. Yeah, 100. I and feel free to edit all of this out. But I, whenever I was in college, I wasn't allowed to drink because I went to a school where we weren't allowed to drink. And so our version of the bar mm-hmm. was going to Sonic, and it was always a big deal to go to Sonic. You were always looking around, seeing who was making out in the car, like all I'm that into stuff. It. I've been doing it. It just like holding the Stanley Cup brings me back. I love Sonic it. America Listen. Drive-In. Find your joy, everybody. Find your joy. That's what I'm going to... That's my political campaign. Make Sonic great again. Make Sonic great again. <laughs> well, maybe their stock will be up after this episode since we talked yeah. about it so much. Here's hoping. Because uh, I'm not influential. Fair. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that. Ryan, yeah. how are you? <laughs> you know, I'm doing pretty good. Things are yeah. going really well. Um, oh, good. I really, I really like this time post-holidays because, number one, in Orlando, the weather is absolutely mm. beautiful. It's like 75 degrees every day down here. Um, yeah. And so that's really great. There's not a lot of tourists here. So if you're going to the parks right now, pretty much any time between now and spring break, like, do it. Book the trip. Book the flight. Mm buy the one day park hopper and then turn around and get on the next flight out. It's mm-hmm. worth it because there's just like so much more room to breathe down here. Um, yeah. So yeah, things are going really good. I, good. you know, am still up to my usual ish. I'm still <laughs> s- spending my life away on a stationary bike you that doesn't are. go anywhere. Um, <laughs> and overall life is, life is going pretty good. I'm really excited good. about spring. I'm going to buy a paddle board. I'm going to go see the baby <gasps> manatee that was just born in silver Springs. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I love that. I love, and you're and you're crushing it on spin. By the way, recently. oh, thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank Not just recently. You. You've always been amazing to to watch and and follow. Uh, so if you're in the Orlando area, uh, take a Ryan class because apparently take it's a, all the rage right now. Take a me class. I'm trying to give Cody Rigsby a run for his money. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, be better. You can you can aim higher. You can be better than Cody Rigsby. I feel uh, like. that's a hot take. That's a hot take right there, and I love it. Okay, so anyways, back back to me, Ryan. Uh, mm-hmm. Since you yeah, asked how I how was, are you? Uh, I'm mm-hmm. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm having a week. I'm not gonna lie to you. There, are, uh, so you may hear it. Tweedles at home in the background. Uh, our furnace is maybe louder than it usually is because it's not it's not really working very well right now. Mm-hmm. And it's it's February in Minnesota, so it's it's she's cold. She's cold outside. It's necessary. It's I mean heat's necessary. Uh, but we're getting it worked on. Uh, we're just not turning it off because that's the problem when it turns off it won't turn back on so sure usually when we record we have it off so we don't have this background noise we'll see if it happens we don't really know anyways other than that i'm fine it's just (laughs) i'm not a winter i'm not a winter gal you're just cold i'm in i'm in my feelings during the winter and i'm not into it i want it to be spring already (laughs) so i'm with you looking forward to spring come on down patrick there's plenty of room on my paddle board for the both of us we'll go meet that baby manatee I'm obsessed we'll with that. Fun. I'll I'll be there in April for Run Disney, but it'll already <gasps> be hot by then. I know. What, what weekend in April? I think it's the second weekend in April. I can't quite okay. remember. I'll be here. Can't wait. I love it. Yeah, I can't wait to see you. All right. All that being said, we should maybe talk about some Disney and some Tweedles. Yeah, what do you say? Let's jump into it. Let's talk about some Tweedles. What are they celebrating? Into, what are they talking into about? It. Yeah, let's go with some celebrations. We have celebrations. We have some feedback. Uh, actually, before we get into celebrations, this is a weird thing that we uh, we have to thank people who made it to our February happiest hour on Zoom, even though it hasn't before happened it happens. yet. Yes, yeah, that is kind of weird. It's <laughs> it's very um, Inception of us, almost Tenant by Christopher Nolan. That's very, very Tenant that. of us. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you all so much for coming out and enjoying our right. happy hour. It was such a great time getting to see. It all was of the best. You. It was the best time ever. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait for the next happiest hour on Zoom. It's going to be magical. All right, let's then get into I'm celebrating. Ryan, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'll kick us off here. Our favorite, our favorite UK friend across the pond. (laughs) Well, I don't want to say favorites. We have multiple favorites. I feel like all of our Tweedles in the UK are all our favorites from across the pond basically um it's true <laughs> so one of our favorites all of our across the are pond, our favorites in general yes that's also true at andy heath puppeteer um my robeson buzz light year i'm so materialistic what's robeson so i think i it is like this really high tech robotic toy of buzz Lightyear that's all the rage oh. right now so the fact that he has one it's just a humble brag i feel like on um, oh andy heath puppeteer's account 
Is that like, well is, are we talking like Tickle Me Elmo level? Because <laughs> you, you remember, even imagine better than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you remember when the Tickle Me Elmo came out, like the, oh, like do the I? really yeah. smart one. Yeah. It, yeah. it felt oh, like Jingle all the one. way. Oh, mm-hmm. you did? <laughs> I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> she had uh, a Tickle Me Elmo. Mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. I, all right. You can Tickle My Elmo. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Patrick, who's next? Who is who is next? Good question. We're on, we're on a, a rampage tonight, aren't we, Ryan? Um, I'm trying to catch up to my notes. Magical travels with Brandy is next. One of our uh, another one of our favorite tweet, tweedles. Um, uh, celebrating Randy. finishing, Randy finishing a wonderful week at Disney. Congratulations. We love that. I love that, Randy. I hope that you had a great time. Fun fact: the first time I ever met Randy in person was in Atlanta at a chicks concert, just completely randomly mm. in Alpharetta, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, and. He is the most lovely human. Um, at Jedi Trousers, one of our other favorite Tweedles from across the pond. We he love is. all of our Tweedles, but I just wanted to emphasize the fact that Andy is not our only favorite. We love everybody. Um, so we do. booking a Walt Disney World trip for August, and it's all I can think about for the next six months. Same <laughs> two week trip with my best friend, staying at the Grand Floridian and the Riviera. Okay, you better. Um, And very excited and riddled with anxiety to ride Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy. Also crossing everything that Tiana's will be open when we go. I sure hope so for you. Absolutely uh, riddled with anxiety to ride Tron and Guardians. Oh, this is really great uh, advice for you, actually, whenever you go. So right now with Virtual Queue, they're giving additional Virtual Queue spaces for Tron for people who are staying at hotels. Mm. So if you do not get Virtual Queue right now, Mm -hmm. it is not because you're not great at refreshing at 6.59. You are. You're the best (laughs) at refreshing at 6.59. It's because the Virtual Queue is filled with extra people right now. So don't be ashamed of yourself. (laughs) wonderful advice (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely all right who's next patrick who is next we have at run dive j w r celebrating less than a month to spring and life returning to the northern hemisphere (laughs) yep same same yeah i can't like spring can't come soon enough shout out to y'all y'all are holding it down for us because i don't I don't know what i would do i have such bad seasonal (laughs) depression i used to have a sad lamp whenever i lived Mm. in nashville it's needed, mm-hmm. but cool. <laughs> it is. Um, add Ali underscore Jor underscore M. That sounded like kind of like a a routine. Ali underscore Joy underscore M. <laughs> um, defending my master's <laughs> thesis this coming Monday. Ali, you better. You're educated. You are going to look at the big brains on Ali. Look at those brains. Look at that frontal lobe. You better, girl. <laughs> Love it. Next up, we have at Sean Cruz celebrating the release of Netflix's Avatar, The Last Airbender live action series. That is the first time I'm hearing about that. Uh, Yeah, it's supposed to be a really big deal, right? Because um, the Avatar that M. Night Shyamalan made, the movie was terrible. And it also had a lot of like misrepresentation. And I think Mm. that they've done a really, uh, from what I've heard and read is that this is supposed to be a new mm-hmm. a whole new level of AAPI representation. Um Oh, okay, great. In film. So I'm very excited to see it. Fantastic. Love that. Let's see at Steve Chu. What's up, Steve Chu? Um Come on, Steve Chu is surviving his first in person audition at Chu in five <gasps> years. That's amazing, Steve Chu. Oh my goodness. I hope you book a chew the job, Steve Chu. I hope you book a chew the but you know what, Steve Chu, you know what you have? Talent. <laughs> so you better pop In off. Spades. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Moving on, we have at CHRS, I'm guessing that's Chris Derby, D-R-B-Y, CHRS, D-R-B-Y, celebrating last minute visit, oh my goodness, to Shanghai Disney for the day. Uh, I I arrive in China from London on work. Wow. That is so cool. I followed Chris and his partner for a really long time, and they are so cool and have the coolest life in London. So I hope you all have the best time. Yeah, let me come visit you sometime, because it sounds like uh, it would be a great time. 
Yeah, absolutely. At Dan Co. Direct, um, Disney World trip with my boyfriend. Uh, love that, Dan. I hope you have the best time. I hope you fall love in love it. again. Over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Refall in love with each other. I love that. Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, Ryan, we have at Silent Tommy celebrating discovering <laughs> discovering Elaine Stritch in company. How did I not know about this force of nature? You are late to the game on that one, my friend of Elaine Stritch and company. It, she's incredible. Yeah, I have never seen company myself, so I'm in the Tommy boat. But I mm. trust that Elaine also has talent, just like Steve Achu. <laughs> same level, same mm-hmm. actual level. Mm-hmm. Elaine, Elaine Achu. Uh, and and Silent Tommy, if you haven't seen the documentary about the making of the soundtrack for Company, please do so. You're going to lose your mind. Oh, I will have to check that out. Yes, yes. Please check out the Company documentary. It's definitely worth watching. Moving on, Ryan, what do you say we get into some listener feedback? Let's get into it. What what What's the feedback? What are people saying? Give it Give it to me straight. <laughs> Or gay. <laughs> you tell me. You you, <laughs> you or kick queer. us off. Let's, what's our okay. first listener feedback? <laughs> oh, yes. That was a question to me, wasn't it? Okay, cool. Um, it at was. Fox, <laughs> at Fox Paw Prince, <laughs> I watched Escape from Tomorrow after listening to your last podcast. And dear God, that was the worst movie that I couldn't stop watching. How can something that bad <laughs> hold one's attention? So I've never watched Escape from Tomorrow. <laughs> Fair. But I will say at Fox Paw Prince, if you do want another movie that is so terrible that you can't stop watching, I watched have you heard of the Jennifer Lopez movie that just came on Amazon? That's like ter- so bad that nobody was willing to invest in it. So she had to fund the movie herself. Oh, no. So she, basically oh, no. <laughs> she like Yeah, it's it's rough. So basically, she was trying to lemonade like Beyonce, but she's giving vinegar. Like, oh, uh, it's 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 really bad. It's (laughs) oh, it's really bad. Um, so Fox Paw Prince, I highly recommend if you need another terrible movie to watch, watch This Is Me (laughs) by Jennifer Lopez on Prime. Fair enough. All right, who else has given us feedback? We have uh, at ADV Parker, who also apparently watched Escape from Tomorrow after our last episode. And uh, ADV Parker says, well, you guys got me to watch it. I'm not entirely sure how I felt about it, but I think I liked it with a question mark. I definitely appreciate the art and the overall message of the fact that life doesn't stop just because you're in the Disney bubble. Some parts were so weird, though. (laughs) Everything, some parts, everything from the spaceship Earth scene and on was so confusing. It was still a worthwhile watch though i think i want to thank you for introducing me to this film but i will be sending my therapy invoices directly to your p.o box fair fair enough we support therapy so please send us that bill okay so after listening to y'all's last episode and then also listening to the feedback that the listeners have given i feel like that i need to pull (laughs) a dumbo and take an edible and watch this movie (laughs) (laughs) and then leave my notes afterwards you're going to go crazy if you do that i promise you (laughs) Oh dear. <laughs> it's wild. It's a wild roller coaster of a movie. Well, thank you everybody for your celebrations and your listener feedback. We love to hear it and we love to celebrate you and know what you're thinking about our episode. So keep it coming. Ryan, are you ready for this week in Disney history? I am so ready. So every single time we record an episode and you say, are you ready for this week in Disney history? You know what I think about? Have you ever seen The Page Master with Macaulay Culkin? Um, I think I have, but it's been, you know, years and years and years. Okay. Well, there's this one scene in The Page Master where he turns animated and then he opens up a book and there's this like really soulful 90s R&B voice like – just making vocalizations in the background and every sure. single time that's what I picture whenever you say this week in Disney history. <laughs> I just needed to let that intrusive thought out for the world to know. Um so fantastic. <laughs> It's something me and my boyfriend, we've recently been calling intrusive thoughts intrusies, and that has made them more fun. So if you need intrusies. <laughs> so if you need to feel better about your intrusive thoughts, call it an intrusy. I like it. I like it. Just give it a little pet name and it's better. Just a little pet name and it's fine. Okay, let's dive into some Disney history. (laughs) Let's do it. All right. Uh, We'll start with 117 years ago 
Ryan, on March 26, 1907, composer Lee Harline was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Harline co-composed music for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He composed many songs for the Silly Symphony series, and he would go on to win Academy Awards for this 1940 Disney classic. One award was for Best Musical Score, and the other was for Best Song. Do you happen to know what movie and what song I'm talking about yet? Okay, so it's 1940. Mm -hmm. I'm going to either guess either Snow White or Dumbo. I think Dumbo is my final answer, and I think it's the the famous song from Dumbo. This is a baby mine. Yeah, you are you are not correct in either movie or song. Uh, I'll give you another hint. The song from this. (laughs) <laughs> the song from this movie would go on to become the theme song for Walt Disney Pictures and is one of the most recognizable melodies in the world. Oh, is it Pinocchio? It is Pinocchio and uh, Wish Upon a Star. I yeah, okay. So I didn't even think about the fact that like Pinocchio, Dumbo, and Snow White kind of all came out within several years of each other, didn't they? Uh, there's a little bit of gap between a couple of them, but I mean, they, it, it happened. Quick- <laughs> <laughs> it happened very quickly, wrong. though. <laughs> no, 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 you're I'm not wrong. wrong. Not a, not like a ten year gap, but I mean, but okay. they did happen in quick succession, though. You are not wrong. Okay, <laughs> they just seem like they go together. You know, <laughs> they do. No, I would. They're definitely part of the whole classic Disney movie family. Yeah, that all yeah. happened within like a ten year span, basically. But uh, yeah, well, well, I love that, and c- congrats to him. <laughs> And Congrats. I hope Congrats. that that the afterlife is treating him well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was weird. I don't know why I said that. That was an intrusive. That was an intrusive. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm into it. All right. Let's move on to our second piece of Disney history. So 39 years ago, Ryan, on March okay. 26th, 1985, this actress was born in Middlesex, England. Her first major role was in 2001 in the long-forgotten movie Princess of Thieves, playing the daughter of Robin Hood. She would, unfortunately then, go on to play the Sugar Plum Fairy in 2018's The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. And of course, her most famous role would be Elizabeth Swan in the Pirates of the Caribbean Mm. franchise. Do you know this actress? Yes, it's Kira Knightley. That was you so are terrible correct. of a British accent. No, it was wonderful. I, I'm into it. <laughs> I, I love act like mouth acting like Kira Knightley. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. That's hilarious. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's so good. So, so good. I love her, actually. I, she was hit and miss for me for a while, but now I'm just, I think I'm obsessed with Kira Knightley. Yeah, I am too. If you really think about it, she was that girl, like G W O R L, like yeah, like, yes, very that two thousand three to like two thousand eight. She was that girl, and she we gotta have sure was we gotta appreciate her. She was holding it down. We do, we do indeed. All right, that was this week in Disney history. We have so much to get through before we even get to the news because Ryan. We have a giveaway. Hey, it's a giveaway. Give it, give it, give it, giveaway. Give away, <laughs> give away. Give away. Hey. It's been so long since we've done a giveaway. I'm excited about this. Okay. Are you ready to learn all about this giveaway, Ryan? Uh, yes. I hope that this goes better for me than our week in Disney history. <laughs> it's going to go so well. I, I can't wait. So we are giving away a book entitled Before the Birds Sang Words by Ken Bruce. Uh, A little description of this book. It's a playful deep dive into the creation of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, detailing not only the genesis and evolution of the revolutionary attraction, this is a story that also explores the contributing influences and passions of the man who spearheaded it, in turn becoming one of Walt Disney's most personal projects. I'll tell you right now, I am in the middle of reading this book, and it is wonderful. If you are a fan of the Enchanted Tiki Room or just of Disney history at all, it is an incredible, incredible book. And I will say, why are we giving this book away? It's because we are going to be interviewing the author of this book in an upcoming episode, and we want our Tweedles to have read the book. So we're giving away a copy of it for our Tweedles. I am so shook. 
I wasn't ready for that reveal. <laughs> Even though I knew it was coming, I still you the way that you said that was so exciting. Oh, um, thank you so much. <laughs> of course. No, that's that's awesome. No, I'm very excited about this. I think me too. The history behind Enchanted Tiki Room, it's one of my favorite episodes of the Imagineering story and um, mm-hmm. I just think it's like it it's so underappreciated in, and it makes me really excited that, you know, people are doing a deep dive into it now. Oh, yeah. You're going to learn a lot more about it in this book than um, – because it, it's uh, written by somebody who isn't necessarily in the Disney family right now. And so he had a lot more freedom to tell a lot more of the story that Disney may not want you to know a little bit of. So it's a, oh. it's a really good read. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. That, sounds, that sounds playful. As it's a little spicy. It yeah, mm-hmm, I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan, will you tell our Tweedles how to enter our contest to win this book? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so if you're wanting this book and you're like, I've got to take everybody else down for this giveaway, here's how you're going to enter. Find the post on our Instagram <laughs> announcing the giveaway first off. So you so you got to be able to read. Um, like that post, so you got to be able to heart. Then you got to tag mm-hmm, three friends. Mm-hmm. So you have to have three friends. If you don't know three That's people, right. then like maybe just like tag some random celebrities, right? <laughs> also, you must be a follower of our Instagram account to be eligible. So if you're just like floating around in space, no, babes, follow us. And then for an extra entry on top of that, you need to add our post to your story. That's right. Post us on main and tag GDTD podcast. It's just that easy. It's just that easy. But I will say that Mm. our Patreon family members are already entered into a separate drawing for an additional book. So if you want even more chances to win, you can like, tag, and repost our post. And if you just so happen to want even more of a chance to win, you could become a Patreon member. I'm just saying. That's true. That's true. Because you're yeah. already entered into it. So yeah, all of our Patreon members, like you just said, are already entered into their own separate drawing that is only for you for a copy of this book. You got options. Um, so Patrick, options. when are we going to find out who won? Because I'm on the edge of glory. Such a good question. Uh, we will announce the winners of this book on the upcoming episode with said author, Ken Bruce, the author of the book Before the Birds Sang Words. Uh, so whenever that episode drops, I think it'll hopefully, if everything goes right, it'll be our next episode. But you know how podcasting goes. It, it could be a, a month from now, but hopefully it'll be soon. Uh, so and exciting. we should say... Very exciting. We should say that this giveaway is, of course, in no way affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. This is just us giving y'all some stuff. <laughs> yeah. So Disney legal, back up. <laughs> back back up off of this. Uh, we can do whatever we want because it's our podcast and not yours. And not yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick, are you ready for a absolutely bussin' news story? Because I am super <laughs> excited about this. Um, yes, so please. Marvel Animation's X-Men 97 is going to be streaming on Disney Plus beginning March 20th. So um, this uh, show was created by Bo DeMaio. Um, or Bo DeMeo, hopefully I said one of those correctly. Um, and Bo is best known for his creative work on The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, which was an animated continuation of The Witcher. He's also um, what mm. worked creatively on The Witcher and also Star Trek New World. So all of these things are like top ranked, right? And Rotten Tomatoes loves all three of those pieces. Mm-hmm. So I think he is going to do an amazing job on X-Men 97. And X-Men 97 is a continuation of the original X-Men animated series appearing on Fox Kids and more way back in 1992. Um, and very special. This this cartoon is very special to me individually because this is the cartoon that really got me into comic books. Um, and it also, oh. you know, really started my passion for superheroes. Um, it yeah. Ended right in 1997, and so that is why it's called X Men 97. Was the last episode came out in um, 1997, and the storyline itself is going to pick up exactly where the series ends. And it shows that the X Men in the trailer are facing dangerous new challenges following the loss of their leader, Professor X. So X Men 97 is also produced by Marvel Studio Animation, so we know it's going to be canon. We know it's going to be so slay. Mm-hmm. Um, and Demeo is serving as head writer and Jake 
Castorina is um, supervising director. Um, they also have several cast members returning from the original series to reprise their roles or new voice characters. Um, so including Cal Dodd, Lenore Zan, George Buza, uh, Catherine Disher, Chris Potter, Allison Seeley Smith, who plays Storm, who is like my mom, um, Adrian Hogue, Christopher Britton, Allison Court, Lawrence Bain, and Ron Rubin. I am so excited, Patrick. I love X-Men. I've been waiting for them to be reintroduced into the Marvel yeah. universe, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I I just can't wait for this. I have a storm tattoo. I mm. I'm going to fall out of my seat. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm very excited about this as well. I I loved this cartoon when it when it was originally uh, on the air. I watched it all the time. I watch it now still because I think I believe it's on Disney Plus again. Um, it's so good. It is on Disney Plus. It's so it's so so good, and I love that they're staying true to the original animation as well because I love that style. Um, so I'm I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be a killer uh, series. For sure. Did you watch X Men Evolution by chance? This was like circa maybe like two thousand two. I had watched some of it. I wasn't as big of a fan of it as I was of the original X Men cartoon, but I did like it. Definitely understandable because very very different vibes, very different, very, very different animation. Yeah. Um, but I lo- loved both, and I think that this is going to be like the cherry on top. And I really hope yeah. that it eventually leads to us. Plus, Deadpool three coming out this summer. I th- I think we're gonna get. X Men mm-hmm. back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I hope that it could finally gets the justice it deserves. It feels like it's happening. It feels like it's going in that direction. Um, Patrick, I think you have some news about Run Disney. I sure do. I sure do indeed. Thank you for that tee off. So this November, the Run Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon Week will celebrate its 15th year, which is very exciting. The weekend will be held October 31st through November 3rd with the Expo opening on Halloween, which I don't think it's ever done that before. Uh, The 5K will be on November 1st, the 10K on the 2nd, and the Half Marathon on the 3rd. So this year's theme will highlight some famous Disney chefs. The Swedish chef from the Muppets will host a 5K, which I believe makes him the very first Muppet to be featured on a Run Disney medal, which is exciting. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but I... I'm pretty sure that's correct. Tiana will host the 10K, and Chef Remy and Linguini will host the half marathon. And anyone completing the two-course challenge, which is the 10K and the half marathon, will get, of course, the challenge medal featuring Chef Mickey. Now, Ryan, let's look at those price tags, because this year's 5K will cost you $112. The 10K will jump up to $155. The half marathon jumps way up to $240. And the two course challenge will run you, wait for it, $400. Now, I will remind you, included in the price for the half marathon or the two course challenge is a ticket to the After Hours Party at Epcot on November 23rd. So that's a little bit baked in there. Otherwise, the admission to that would be $115 if you're not running either of those races. Those are some steep steep prices, though, Ryan. Yeah. Steep prices. Does that include, like, for example, I know a lot of run Disney people Mm. like to go to the parks after they finish their race. Mm. Does that price include a park ticket? It does not. It does not get you into the parks. Oh, Oh. I know. I know. That feels always like a miss to me that you don't get to, like, enter the parks after you run it. You have to buy a separate ticket to go to the parks. Yeah, that's so funny. They're like, hey, you can run by the Epcot ball if you want to. But if you want to come back and drink around the world, you got to buy a ticket. 100%. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. That's a little wild. Yeah, I feel like prices are just slowly creeping up every every single year. And they're not giving any discounts to anybody, no matter what the circumstances, which again, feels like a mess. Uh, I love run Disney, but yeah, these are some deep prices. I will say I'm excited about the the theme this year. They're not always great on the theming for the wine and dine weekend, but this one feels a little bit more cohesive with like actually using chefs from Disney canon, which is nice to see. Yeah, I love that. Also, justice for Remy, but that's fine because <laughs> he's a chef. Fair. What? What? What do you mean? Because Remy's a chef. He is. But what do you mean justice for Remy? Oh, is Remy is Remy going to be on a medal too? <laughs> Were you asleep during my whole news story, Ryan? Because yes, he is on the no. Maybe <laughs> he's on the half marathon. I, you know, we're gonna edit that out. That's fine. <laughs> okay, bye. Nope, I'm keeping all of it because I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> this is to show you to gaze 
Nobody listens to me when I speak, ever. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Gaze Do the D. If you would like to subscribe and learn oh, more and continue God. the conversation. <laughs> We're just ending it here. I'm obsessed with it. Ending it here. Ryan, may I have the envelope, please? Yes, you may. <laughs> I'm I'm super excited about this episode for a couple of reasons. A, I love award season. Uh, I don't always watch it, but I just love to see who gets nominated for awards. And B, we get to talk about Fab Five, basically just all of our favorite moments in Disney that were awarded. I just think there's just something so joyous about this this Fab Five that I'm excited to talk to you all about it. Oh, I'm so pumped. And also, can I just say that this is my very first mm-hmm. Fab Five episode, so they're in, in it and of itself is. I'm very excited about. But also, it was so hard to narrow down a top five. Yeah. And I had so many ties for first place or like, I had so many ties for every single place that I like noted. So I just, it was so difficult. Just because I put something in fifth place, that doesn't mean that I actually don't love it. Like number one. So just so y'all know. But I just got so stressed. I know. I totally get it. Like it goes to show you how many Academy Awards Disney has won in this <laughs> since the Academy Awards started basically like they're just there's millions of them and so it was really hard to choose and then like you said it was hard to like narrow it down to just five and then place those five in any sort of order that made sense without like feeling bad that all of them weren't number one you know what I mean yeah exactly so you know just take my opinions with a grain of salt and I, I hope that everything that I chose resonates <laughs> with all of you I love it. Did you have a game plan at all? Like, did did any of them, you're like, oh, I only chose things that were best movie or things that were best actor or, you know what I mean? No, I'm all across the board, honestly. Um, oh, I think nice. that I have, I have lots of different categories, I'm pretty sure. So um, did you go with a, with a strategy into it? I didn't mean to, but then when I looked at my list, I was like, oh, almost all of these except for one are for music. So okay, <laughs> apparently my head was in a music space. Okay, I love that because I was also afraid that you and I were going to pick the same thing. So it sounds like, let's just dive right in. Oh, I love this. Okay, let's start with our number five. So these are, again, just to remind our Tweedles, these are our picks for Fab Five for our favorite awards that were given uh, to Disney for the Academy Awards in any category. We just chose our favorite ones, the ones that spoke to us more for whatever reason. So do you want to kick us off or do you want me to go first? Sure, I'll kick us off. Okay, so my number five on our Fab Five of Oscar award-winning Disney movies is the 1995 Uh, Best original score winner um, goes to The Lion King. Mm. Now, the reason why I chose this was because The Lion King, first of all, that soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. I still, to this day, (laughs) listen to... Um, I can't remember what it's called on the soundtrack, but they're the section where basically Simba has just defeated Scar and he's walking up Pride Rock in slow motion mm-hmm. in the rain. That is yeah. one of the most beautiful orchestrated pieces of music I've ever heard in my whole entire life. And yeah. I just this this movie was like the f- first time that I watched a movie and that my parents explained to me that we're from Africa, like originally. Oh, and yeah. like I under, this was the first time that I like got a grasp of what my culture was. Sure. Um, and so that was a really, really special memory for me. Um, I'm very excited to hear your number five. I love that. No, I, well, I mean, I, that's such a great, a great choice. And foolishly, it didn't, it didn't even occur to me to think, I, I just forget how great that score is. And I don't mean the songs in it, which are also great, but like yeah. the score of the movie itself is so beautiful. You're totally right. What a great, what a great pick. Well, Hans, Hans Zimmerman put his whole, you know what, into that soundtrack. <laughs> he did. His whole foot. He put his whole, whole foot into it. Whole foot. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So my number five, I cheated a little bit here in that I, this is, 
it is a Disney movie, but it was released by Touchstone, but Disney was very involved in this movie. So that's why I felt okay using this as my number five. So my number five goes to, it's a Best Visual Effects Award for 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And the uh, the people who got the award, I should name them real quick, would be uh, Ken Ralston, Richard Williams, Edward Jones, and George Gibbs. So this movie, in general, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, is in, in my opinion, just a genius movie. It's it's a movie that like shouldn't have happened and likely will never something like this will never happen again with the mixing of cartoon characters from several different film companies and Disney yeah. really being okay with that. They're usually very precious about what they do with their characters. And so it was wild the way this whole thing came together. But putting a pin in that it's the visual effects that i think make this movie so special like no cgi was used because it was way too early for that it, the cgi at the time it was available but it wasn't good enough at the time to pull off what they did in this movie so they basically just used traditional animation and cells to layer the animation uh and the characters on top of the live action film that they were doing uh if you go back and look at from some fun youtube videos you can see uh like characters just sitting on boxes basically that then are animated around them to look like the the taxi cab for instance it just and they have to act the entire time with nothing basically and then they add in the animation later it's really cool the way they did it it was just it was magical in 1988 and for my money it still holds up today and interestingly the design of this movie fits so perfectly with Disney's Hollywood Studios, which opened just a year after this movie was released. So it's hard to know if the oh. movie took inspiration from the park or if the park took inspiration from the movie, but they pair really well together, which is cool. I have so, never thought about that before. That is so true. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I should say, this has nothing to do with it, but in my research, incidentally, this year, nineteen the 1989 Academy Awards, I believe, was the same year that Pixar's Tin Toy won for Best Animated Short Film, and they were not owned by Disney at this time, but they were winning awards at the same time, and I think they caught notice of each other during this Academy Awards. So, kind of a fun fact. Oh, that I love that. The beginning of a beautiful friendship. Right? Exactly. All right. Moving on, Ryan, number four. What did okay. you pick? My number four pick was the 2005 winner of Best Animated Feature, and that went to The Incredibles. Mm. I This movie is such an original idea, and I think it was the first time that I watched a Pixar movie, and I was old enough to recognize that the adult undertones of Pixar movies like that yes. these, that like you know superhero superheroes were being ostracized because they were being different or like what is the true reality of what it looks like when a superhero decides to retire and start a family and the mid-century modern aspects to it the it's just and how um Mrs. Incredible Elastigirl, she is body crazy, curvy, wavy, not to quote Megan the Stallion. <laughs> I'm I'm a I love this movie. And I also love that the sequel was just as good as the first one. Just as good. Yeah, they both are such good movies. What a great yeah. pick. And the Incredibles was such a game changer too, I feel like, right? It was just like mm-hmm. it, it was nothing we had ever really seen before, especially from a superhero movie. There's their own spin on superheroes, which was so interesting and beautiful to see. It really was. And I love that it kind of touches on like moments of realistic family dysfunction and how families go through stress every single day just living. And that doesn't matter Uh if you're a superhero family. It doesn't matter if you're like, it doesn't matter what type of family you are. Like that is a universal experience. And I just. Right. I love that. I love that it made them so human while also recognizing that they're superheroes at the same time. And I felt like it was a great reminder to us that we often view our parents as superheroes, but they're people just like us. And so we have to have empathy for them. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. I love that. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, like yeah. the how insecure all the characters were too, even though they're superheroes, they still have these massive insecurities. And and that was like their biggest hurdle to get over was like, no, we got to put that aside so we can be our superhero selves. Great. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested to hear your number four. Well, you're about to. So um, (laughs) my number four (laughs) is in the category of best original song for 1990s Dick Tracy, the song Sooner or Later, which was written 
interestingly, by Stephen Sondheim, of all people. Oh. Stephen Sondheim, a musical uh, known for Broadway musicals, one of the greatest Broadway musical um, songwriter of all time, wrote the music, the songs anyways, for, for Dick Tracy, which is crazy. But the song Sooner or Later is such a good song. And this movie in general, I should say, is is so special for me. I don't, I, I don't know if I knew why it was special at the time for me, but when I saw it for the first time, I was seeing something that I'd never seen before. This sort of mm-hmm. beautifully art-directed, acted, costumed, and then the music in this movie is so good, which is interesting to think about Dick Tracy. You don't really think about the music of Dick Tracy because he's a, you know, a, a cop, basically. It's a, it's a crime thriller. But the music is so beautiful and the songs are so are so wonderful. It's so theatrical, so over the top. You've got Warren, Warren Beatty, you've got Madonna, you've got Dustin Hoffman, Al Pacino, a score by Danny Elfman. And then, of course, like I said, the original songs by Stephen Sondheim. And I have to say, if you have some time on your hands, go back and watch Madonna's performance at the Oscars, performing the song sooner or later. It's just her on stage, dressed like Marilyn Monroe, doing sort of a Dita Von T strip tease a little bit to the song. It's the gayest thing you'll ever see in your entire life, and it's immaculate, immaculate. Go watch it immediately. It's 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 the it's so it's so good. There are so no words. I, I had no idea that this movie existed or that Madonna did that performance. Mm. So I definitely have to do oh some gosh. investigation. I think that that might be on you the list. You have to. Yes, go watch Dick Tracy. Madonna's performance in Dick Tracy alone is so good. It's she's so wonderful in this movie, but and she just sings the crap out of this song sooner or later. It's a it's a really good song. So okay, that's Madonna. why it's on my list. You better okay. go, girl. <laughs> you better. Uh, All right, number three, Ryan. Okay, what do you got for me? N- number three. Um, I selected the 2011 Best Animated Feature winner, Toy Story Three. Ooh. I I can't tell you how in shambles I was whenever I saw this movie. So to give you some context here for me personally, just like in my life, whenever Toy Story 3 dropped, uh, I was a sophomore in college and mm-hmm. um, Toy Story 3 came out and also Harry Potter 7 Part 2 came out in the same year. And so like my childhood was basically over. (laughs) And it was such an emotional year because I was like, okay, this is my second year of college. I'm becoming more of an adult. Uh, Buzz and Woody might die in this furnace. Um, I mean, good lord. It was just a really uh, cathartic movie for me to say goodbye to my childhood. And I know that we have Toy Story 4 now and we're going to get Toy Story 5. And I truly and utterly believe that Woody is going to make it back in time that Andy is about to have a son or a daughter. And that is going to be Woody's like next adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, this movie just like was a perfect like closing of a chapter to my first part of my life and so i i had to put it mm. in this list i love i love that um toy story 3 like come for me if you want to is for my money the best of all the toy stories it's i just, completely it's agree so, with you right it's so perfectly written it's so it just tugs at all the the right heartstrings and i mean if you didn't cry during toy story 3 you are you don't have a pulse i feel yeah, like it 100%. just percent it's so good yeah i i almost felt like i did like toy story 4 and i am excited for for what's to come but i i, I would have been fine if they had left it at toy story 3 you know what i mean i i agree it's almost like when you end something on such an epic note it it just doesn't have to come yeah. back you know and i think that they had yeah. originally written three to truly be the last one I think and so. because it did so amazing yeah they kept it going but i think i completely agree with you they should have stopped it right there yeah i mean l- l- yeah like i said four is great as well and i'm sure yeah. five will be great but yeah three three is three for me well done you're crushing it with your your, you. your very first fab five thank you I'm, <laughs> Who, I, you know me who me i have taste what you sure do you sure do all right here we go my number three is under the category best original song for the little mermaid and the song was under the sea by alan menken and howard ashman now i will caveat that right i mean i'll caveat this with 
I, I do fully believe that Kiss the Girl, which was also nominated, should have won this award. So it's a little bit controversial that I'm saying this is on my list that the Under the Sea was one of my favorite wins. But I think I'm giving this win for best original song to The Little Mermaid in general and all of the music from The Little Mermaid. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. It was such great music. And I remember... yeah. I, I think that they, I don't remember, because The Little Mermaid came out um, in 89, right? Mm-hmm. But they re-released it in theaters at some point. And I do remember going mm-hmm. to see it for the re-release in theaters. And I just remember being gobsmacked um, as a kid and just yeah. being absolutely enthralled by the music. It was like music that I had never heard in a movie before. Yeah. And I think that that's where The Little Mermaid has like made a permanent stamp is that like, There is nothing else like it. Just period. Yeah. End of sentence. End all be all in Disney. Yeah. And I, I'm so glad that you picked that. I, yeah. And uh, like I said, like under the sea, I, I get it. Like it, it pleases the masses and when it's in your head, it's in your head forever. And so it did, it, it it rightfully won. Uh, but for my money, kiss a girl is the better of the two songs, which was also nominated, like I said, but. What are you going to do? And incidentally, this would also be Howard Ashman's very first Oscar win. Uh, So it's a really special moment in gay history as well. And just for an extra dash of gay, uh, Paula Abdul was the one who announced the the award, the the the, the winning of this award. So oh, I love that just that. made it a little bit gayer. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> like Paula Abdul. That is gay. <laughs> um. Very gay. Very gay. <laughs> I uh, love that. Okay, here we go. Number two. Are you ready? I'm so ready. I'm sad we're almost done. I know. I'm sad, too. We could just keep talking about this for forever. <laughs> um, okay, I so know. my number two is the 2019 winner of Best Costume Design, and that went to Black Panther. Oh, girl. I don't have to say anything else. Yeah. No. Nope. I, I just don't have to say anything else. Costumes were... I. I it was spectacular, like in every sense of word. And the special thing about this movie is that, you know, for kind of the generation right before me, I think that their connection to the discussion about how we as black people, like we are connected to Africa, but we're also so disconnected to Africa and like Mm. examining that and how that manifests itself in how we navigate our life in America today, you know, coming to America with Eddie Murphy, that was kind of like my pr- the previous generation to me. That was like the epitome of that, right? Sure. And Black Panther, I felt like came in and did it on a serious note. And just like, I, I, I immediately after I saw Black Panther, I wanted to do all types of different research about like African clothes and what what patterns were native to like the parts of Africa that my family came from. The only reason why I know that is because I did a 23 and Me, you know? And there's, there's like no way for most of us who are in America because of slavery to ever find out where we came from um, in Africa. And so Mm -hmm. it just like the costuming in this movie is so insane. And they jam packed so much representation of so many different African tribes and African cultures and African countries Mm -hmm. all in a two hour movie. It just was like, uh, no notes. Yeah. (laughs) Nope. A hundred percent, and no and, and Michael B. Jordan wearing those costumes. Uh, I mean, it's, no no a seat unto itself. Do I also <laughs> want him to see him take off those costumes? Absolutely, I do. Listen, very much, very much that Michael B. Jordan, you can Wakanda my forever. <laughs> I don't know where I was going. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> I tried so um, hard. That intrusive one. I, I, we we understood what you meant by that. Yeah, we we yeah. felt every every moment of it. But yeah, it, everything you said. Like I don't need to go on anymore about it. It's just mm-hmm. it's the co- it's perfect. The costumes are perfect yeah. in that movie. So good. Like, yeah. So I have to say, Ryan, though, you and I are on the same page because my number. Did two you pick a best costume? Is, it, no. Wait oh. for it. Is best original score for Black Panther. <gasps> uh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Lud- Ludwig Göransson wrote this 
incredible. What can you say? I mean, it's it's such a standout score for any movie, really, and it's specifically standout in the MCU, right? It's just yes. it's so oh my god, it's so different. It's something that we've never heard before. Yet it incorporates that MCU music into it, but makes it its own its own beast. Um, it just it fits the movie so well. You could argue that it actually the music drives the movie forward like it is a character in the movie is the score of this movie it's it's so perfect um and for me what's amazing about it is that it's it's all it's of course very african and very tribal uh but it's also incredibly global and accessible all at the same yes. time like 100%. you don't have to right you don't have to have like even heard that music before to have understood that music in this movie does that make sense yes absolutely i was just about to say that of like kind of what i was talking about with you know the underlying messages of black panther being yeah the the kind of like disconnect that we as black people feel from Africa, even though we are deeply connected to it and trying to resolve Mm. that you see that in the soundtrack. Like it's the perfect marrying of hip hop Mm -hmm. with African music. And then on top of that, you put in like this amazing score. Uh, Mm -hmm. No notes, no notes. Yeah. No, I mean, and me, me even like as a, as a white man, like you can, you can feel the history in this Mm. music, right? And all of the elements that go into it. It's just, it's, it's just, ugh. I, I, yeah, the no notes, no notes. It's not Tasty. Uh, And I got, uh, I had the privilege of, watching Black Panther uh, as played by the Minnesota Orchestra uh, when it came here to town. <gasps> oh, a core memory, for wow. sure. Hearing that music played live, it was incredible. Incredible. I, I will remember that for the rest of my life. I would simply perish if I heard a live orchestra. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was we gotta great. do that. It's we so gotta good. do that. So, so yeah, you and I are on Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Love, slay. <laughs> okay are we ready for number Amazing. one i guess so although that means we're almost done but yes what is your number one right okay i think i'm gonna really surprise you with this one Ooh, i think I'm everybody's ready. gonna be surprised they're they're not gonna they're not gonna be ready for this okay so my number one was the 1972 pick for best visual effects and that goes to mm. bed knobs and broomsticks Oh, I am surprised by this. Okay, go on. Yeah. So um, I, I realized that I didn't do any deep diving research. <laughs> like, I feel like you've been naming people's names and I've been like, I love this movie. Um, uh- <laughs> but <laughs> Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was one of my mom's favorite movies when she was little. Aww. And uh, we used to watch it together all the time when I was a kid. And it's one of my favorite memories of my mom before she passed away. And sure. we used to sit on the bed together and I would like turn the bed post like ball like three times just like in the movie and stuff like that make a wish and we would pretend that we Aww. were traveling on the bed and everything and so um bed knobs and broomsticks is like one of my entryway loves for disney and yeah. it was what started me and my mom bonding over disney and um yeah i i will always appreciate that for, for for that you know it was and angela lansbury i mean come on i mean i mean what i love thank you for sharing that that's such a great thing to have you know what i mean just a a a core memory of yours that that you're sharing with us and it just goes to show you like how impactful these movies and these moments can be for us for whatever reason and so yeah, yeah that's just a great example of that Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. It's it's really crazy because like my my mom passed away when I was eight. And so like I've lived, you know, uh, 22 more years after that. So there's plenty of other things mm. that have happened in my life. But the things that I cherish from mm. those eight years with her are very, very important to me and things that I'll never forget. And bed knobs and broomsticks is one of those yeah. things. So I had to rank it as my number one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And, and I mean, sort of to tie into one of my picks that like Mary Poppins and of course, Brendan and Brunsticks sort of walked so that Roger Rabbit could run, yes. right? Like mm-hmm. in that 100%. The, the animation and live action tied together. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Patrick, it's your time. Well, all right. We're, we're back to, yeah, we're back to me. Okay. Our last one, number one for me. So this is something that we've already talked about a little bit earlier in the episode, uh, in that it was Lee Harline's birthday this week. 
uh, who won the Academy Award for Best Original Song for 1940s Pinocchio When You Wish Upon a Star, which is my number one pick for an Academy Award. Oh, I love that. I just think... Yeah, I mean, I just think like this. This song is is Disney history, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. it's literally the theme song for right for the for the Walt Disney Company. Now, everybody has heard this song at some point. Like every single person, almost in the world, has has heard a version of this song somewhere somehow. Um, it's just such a perfect, beautiful song that just takes you back to your childhood. It it evokes so many memories for me. Anyways, it. It just, yeah, it, it it's really impactful. And it's such a simple song, too, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like something so delicate and simple and almost music boxy can have this deep impact on a nation, really. Yeah. <laughs> like a whole enormous global impact. It's it's incredible. Uh, and I, I have to believe that they didn't know what they had at the time until... Until now, they I can't imagine they would ever dreamed that this song from this movie would go on would really live forever in in disney canon so for me yeah when you wish upon a star it's just a it's a it's a perfect little tune you know it really is it really is a perfect little tune and it's crazy how like music holds such power in our lives and exactly it can bring somebody to tears immediately like that specifically Mm. that song you know um Mm -hmm. have you the the first time that i heard sarah bareilles's version for the 100th anniversary soundtrack i immediately was in tears Mm. and i don't know why and the same thing happened to me whenever i heard cynthia revo's version too that brought me to tears immediately so there's something magic about that song i mean there's something magic about that song. And I mean, if you watched um, Wish all the way to the end, that little yeah. tag at the end of it, of the grandpa, mm-hmm. oh, how I sobbed, how I sobbed when that happened. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. That was beautiful. So, well, do- well, Ryan, I think we crushed it. I think we're beautiful. I think we so too. I think so too. <laughs> you know, Steve Achu has talent and so do we. We, <laughs> we Achu do as well. So um, before we close out, I wanted to just give some interesting... Um, facts about the Academy Awards when it comes to yeah. Disney. Uh, so there's some uh, some interesting times when Disney didn't win anything at all. So as we know, Disney won many, many, many awards over the years. But so after Dumbo in 1942, which did win for uh, Best Original Score, it wasn't until 1948 that they would win another award for a, a movie that we don't like to talk about, but Song of the South uh, for the <laughs> yeah. song Zippity Doo Dah. <laughs> In 1948. Uh, and what was going on, obviously, was World War II. Uh, the, the country was still trying to recover from from the war. And people just weren't invested, really, in the movies. And Disney wasn't yeah. invested so much in their movies either. Uh, so there was a huge gap when they didn't win anything at all. Uh, after that, they were sort of on a roll every year, winning something. Um, however, Disney, interestingly, didn't win anything between 1955 for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, which won for Best Visual Effects and Art Direction. And then it wasn't until 1965. So 10-year gap happened then when Mary Poppins finally won. And what was going on there in my research was that Disneyland, of course, was opening. So Disney Mm. was not focusing on their movies for this huge stretch of time. And all attention was placed on opening Disneyland. Um, So kind of an interesting thing of of when they decide to focus on movies and when they decide not to focus on movies is really relevant in when they win awards and don't win awards. Yeah, I have have a follow-up question for you. So during those times, because when it comes to like animation categories back in the day Mm -hmm. of when you're speaking i don't really even know any other animation studios that were making movies at that time so who were some of did you happen to see who were some of those winners during those times that they didn't win like when they were recovering from world war ii or right around the time that disneyland opened that's a really good question i i don't have an answer for you i did not do that research but now i'm super curious to know what was winning if disney yeah. wasn't winning or did they have those categories at all were, or were if they, they doing was anyone yeah. doing animation yeah that's a great question because like dreamworks didn't exist back then right no yeah they they wouldn't have existed it would have been like you know hannah barbera and and maybe universal maybe yeah. doing some stuff but yeah i don't i don't really know that's that's super interesting mm. follow up we got to follow up <laughs> We are going to follow up. Well, Ryan, well done on your first Fab Five episode. Did you like, do you like doing the Fab Fives? I, they're um, my favorite thing to do. I loved it. It was a great trip down memory lane. And yeah, 
it it just like reminded me of like how impactful Disney's body of work has been to not only my life individually, mm. but um just they've really busted down walls and broken glass ceilings when it comes to animation being taken seriously as an art form and also in film. Mm -hmm. And it makes me super excited that they have kind of paved the way for more independent animation studios like Netflix and, you know, Mm. you know, they're, they're paving the way. And I, I love that more animation is getting, a chance and taken a lot more seriously by the Academy now. So I see a bright future Mm -hmm. ahead for not only animated movies, but more family oriented movies overall. As do I. I love that. And yeah, I guess you're right. It's interesting in that even when Disney doesn't win the Academy Awards for animation or or what have you, like we can all really draw back to anyone who's doing animation today is doing it because of Disney. You know what I mean? Drew drew inspiration because of Disney. The game changed year after year, decade after decade because of Disney. So even when they don't win, I mean, they really started it all uh, on a professional scale like this. So well done, Disney. And Tweedles out there, let us know what, A, you think about our picks for uh, Fab Five Academy Awards for Disney. And what, what are your uh, favorite moments in Disney history uh, in which they won Academy Awards for? Let us know. Anything else, Ryan? Any any um, additional movies that didn't make your list or, or things that did win that you're like, why did this win for Disney? <laughs> okay, yes, absolutely. So you know how Ooh. they re-released, um, they re-released Turning Red um, and Soul and Luca in theaters, right? Because of yes. the pandemic. Yeah. I think that they should re-release Onward. Onward did not get a chance to stay in the box office long enough and... And not enough people got to see Onward before COVID started. And I think that the storyline of Onward is one of the most profound storylines that Disney has ever written. And they need to talk about it more. That's, that is my, uh, that's, what are the kids saying? That is my Roman Empire. (laughs) I love that. You know, I I think it'd be interesting if even like you and I took a page out of, out of what you just said and, and, and rewatched that and did another um, episode about Onward now that time has passed because it was one of the last episodes we did in fact it might have been the last episode we did before the pandemic happened uh, in which Adam and I weren't recording together in the room uh, now and and how maybe our minds have changed uh, on this movie so I love that I love that idea yes next episode with me take two on Onward (laughs) Onwards and Upwards Okay, Patrick, you know what the true definition of an intrusi is. You know what the <laughs> ultimate intrusi is. What's that, Ryan? <laughs> is a quick D question. Now that <laughs> is an intrusi. <laughs> a quick a quick intrusi. A quick intrusi D. A quick intrusi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a quick intrusi D. I feel like most quick Ds are probably pretty intrusi anyway. So yeah. yeah, let's do it. Well, you know, if the D isn't intruding, then what are we even doing here? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Then what are we? Why are we here? Why are we? What are we here? What are we doing? What's life all about? I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, we've got some quick D questions from our listeners. Uh, Let's do. Let's do two of them. I think we can get through them pretty quickly. So the first one's pretty spicy. Are you ready? Yes, of course. I love spicy D. We we have at PJW underscore at underscore WDW asking if you were to, if you speaking of intrusive, if you were to get busy at a park without getting caught, where where would you do it? Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, that is a spicy intrusive right there. Where okay. Are we, <laughs> where are we? If I had doing to it? pick a place to make whoopee. In yeah. a Disney park, yeah, and not get caught. Oh, oh, I I've got one. I've got one. And that's, okay, do you, have you one? go first. You go first. You know what I'm going to do? First. It. I'm I'm going to do it in the Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. Absolutely. Wow, absolutely. the breeze. <laughs> he, said, he said absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm the, the views, the open air. I'm kind of into it. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm interested yeah. in this treehouse now. And, and there's a little bit of, of a fear element because of the height. And so that adds a little extra. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Okay. No, I love that. Um, okay, I'm going to go with Tower of Terror um, so that I can feel the rush <laughs> like Troy Sivan. <laughs> you know, the there's Tower nothing like... Terror. You know, there's nothing like, you know, some G-forces to really add on to the g-force <laughs> i'm interested to know how that would work like that i'm i'm sort i'm sort of logistically yeah. uh, logistically like you know how when you like if you they say if you like uh hold a penny and and drop it just as you're dropping it'll stay in front of you the whole time like is there something there with gravity oh, yeah and, and intrusives do you know what i mean i don't know i'm interested, I'm interested. Uh, probably but i'm I think that a thrill can lead to some really great fun. So I say yes. <laughs> bring on the adrenaline and the uncertainty. That's what I say. Give me that tower, you know? I like Give it. me that okay. tower. I want to be towered. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this got ridiculous. Oh, oh God. Oh. Okay, well, um, along those lines, uh, we have another question from Steve Chu. He's asking us to give uh, top five gayest Disney villains. But I feel like uh, we don't have time for top five. We just did a top five. But let's, okay, who is your gayest Disney villain? Just off the top of your head. I don't know. Uh, Mother Grothel from Tangled, she's pretty gay. She's, (laughs) and not that she herself (laughs) might be a queer individual, but she's at least for the gays. Yeah. She is for the gays. Like, like I feel like the people who love Mother Grothel are going to be, like, your mean gays who love drinking, like, mar- dirty, dirty, dirty martinis. And they quote a lot of Will and Grace. Like, that is Mother Grothel's, like... Very it, that. That's her, her pack Very of that. gays behind her, right? And I'm going to stick with it. What yeah. are you, who is Who would you say is the gayest Disney villain? I mean, I have to... Everyone knows I'm going to say this. The Reluctant Dragon is the gayest thing that's ever happened in cinematic history. Oh, yes. Uh, I always forget uh, that. I, I mean, it is... it is Yeah, he, it's just unabashedly gay. You can't hide it gay. Someone who has never had a closet kind of a gay. You know what I mean? <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've never had a closet. They're only in a studio. <laughs> A hundred percent. They have a rack right beside the bed. (laughs) The reluctant, yes, the reluctant dragon is the last one on the dance floor. The lights come up, and he's still going after it. Yep, and he's still going after it. (laughs) Pounding vodka sodas with lime. (laughs) Yeah. Yep, he's doing it on the Tower of Terror for sure. For sure, (laughs) he's getting towered. Alrighty, y'all, that will do it for this episode of Gays Do the D. Thanks for listening. To become a patron of the podcast, visit our website at gaysdothed.com slash donate. For a donation of any amount, you can receive exclusive Gays Do the D content and help us to continue to bring you the very best Disney news and discussion. Continue the conversation after this episode on Facebook and Instagram at GDTD Podcast. Also, submit your questions or show ideas to info at gaysdothed.com. Have a great week, everyone, and see you real soon. He's getting towered. <laughs> <laughs>